Carnegie Institution for Science Multimedia Press Release, Stem Cell Surprise for Tissue Regeneration. Scientists working at the Carnegie Institution's Department of Embryology have overturned previous research that identified critical genes for making muscle stem cells. It turns out that the genes that make muscle stem cells in the embryo are not needed in adult muscle stem cells to regenerate muscles after injury. The finding challenges the current course of research into muscular dystrophy, muscle injury, and regenerative medicine, which uses stem cells for healing tissues, and it favors the usage of age-matched stem cells for therapy. Previous studies have shown that two genes, PAX3 and PAX7, are essential for making the embryonic and neonatal muscle stem cells in the mouse. Lead researcher Christoph Lepper is a pre-doctoral fellow in Chen Ming Fan's lab at Carnegie. He has, for the first time, looked at how these two genes promote stem cells at varying stages of muscle growth in live mice after birth. The problem is that a lot of these genes that are thought to be important for adult muscle stem cells are very important and critical in the embryo, and not just for muscle, um, but also other aspects. And so when you inactivate these genes from the germline, then the embryo lacks these genes, and oftentimes these are lethal mutations. For example, for muscle, some of these no muscle develops at all. Take, for example, the PAX3, PAX7 double mutant. So you inactivate both these genes, PAX3 and PAX7, in the embryo. Then they die early at 13.5 days after um, conception. But in these animals, um, no, no secondary muscle formation occurs. But obviously, since they die so early, you can't study the, uh, this, these genes in the adult thing because you never get adult animals that are mutant for both these genes. So these new tools that are available now, it's an, a drug-inducible Cre recombinase, and so you can specifically express this, this Cre recombinase, which is a protein, and then activate it by injecting adult animals with this drug called tamoxifen, and then tamoxifen activates this, this protein, uh, Cre recombinase, and Cre recombinase can then modify uh, genes in a way that you can either inactivate a gene or, or activate a gene. Um, and so for our studies, then we use this to inactivate uh, PAX3 and PAX7 in, in adult stem cells, in the satellite cells. Mm -hmm. And then surprisingly found that while these are very important for muscle formation in the embryo, in the adult, they are, they are dispensable in the assay that we have used. Well, this has been six years in the making. And when I came, we, we didn't have these tools in lab. We generated a lot of these tools ourselves, which takes uh, quite some amount of time. But I think that's a great thing of working at Carnegie here. We have the ability then to ask some questions that are kind of like out of the box and look at problems from a different angle. And I think that's, that's really important. That has been a big part of why we have been able to do, to do the study here and in a small lab doing, doing uh, small science but, uh, with, with, with large impact. This cross-section of hind limb muscle tissue is from a mouse five days after injury. The uninjured cells are at top and stained red. The blue cells below are regenerating muscle cells. They were labeled with a blue stain and formed from muscle stem cells. The study appears in the journal Nature. For more information, see our website at www.ciw.edu. This is John Strom for the Carnegie Institution.